The BBC announced this week that it was investigating Palestinian affairs correspondent analyst Tala Halawa, whose past tweets include saying, hashtag Israel is more Nazi than Hitler, and another tweet, oh, Hitler was right, IDF go to hell, and a Facebook post declaring solution for Israel-Palestinian conflict, relocate Israel into the United States. Not much ambiguity there. Well, joining us now for more is Tom Gross, a British journalist and international affairs correspondent, speaking to us from Prague this evening. And also with us is Dan Perry, international affairs analyst and a former Middle East editor at the Associated Press, speaking to us from Tel Aviv. And gentlemen, let's start with specifics. Tom, I'm going to start with you. You followed the BBC for years, an org a news organization that some feel have an institutional bias against Israel. How do you read? your reaction to uh, this latest uh, incident or, or affair? Well, first of all, I should mention that CNN also had a contributor who praised Hitler last week, and CNN fired that contributor swiftly. The BBC needs to fire this woman who has uh, praised Hitler. But what I would say is it's the tip of the iceberg. There is, as you say, an institutional problem. It's self-serving. The BBC hires like-minded people who have a certain worldview. Of course, they're not all anti-Semitic or anti-Israel, but consciously or otherwise, there is prejudice in much of its reporting. And in particular with the BBC, it's publicly funded by the British taxpayer. It's the world's largest news broadcaster through its television and radio networks, broadcasting in many languages on the world service. And it's under a British legal obligation to be balanced. And it's not balanced, certainly when it comes to the Middle East. All right. And uh, I want to go to Dan. Of course, gentlemen, you could react to what either one of you saying during the conversation. But then let's look at the AP case, because there I think it's a little, uh, it's not as clear cut. Uh, Emily Wilder certainly did not put out tweets praising Hitler or anything of that. She did. And a lot of the focus was on her activities in college uh, before even becoming a journalist, AP. And it's not been clear uh, what policy she violated while working at the, the agency. Uh, what's your reaction as a former AP uh, uh, bureau chief and more than that uh, to this uh, incident? Look, I really don't want to comment on the uh, Emily Wilder situation. I'm not that familiar with uh, the ins and outs of it. I know that AP's uh, social media policy is very restrictive, and, and in general, media organization certainly has a right to, act, to ask that its, um, it's uh, reporters and even other staff keep their politics to themselves. Um, other media, you know, are, are less that way. Uh, AP tends to be very, very apolitical, and, and, and that's an issue for AP to deal with. I think in general, um, attacking the press uh, is sort of the last refuge of a scoundrel. The press has a very, very important um, and incredibly difficult job. Uh, there are cases where coverage is unfair, of course, and to a certain point, um, everything that every one of us does is colored through our own filter, and certainly there are unintelligent and uninformed and insensitive journalists. But by and large, uh, the foreign media, in my experience, you know, gets a story out from wherever it may be, and that includes Israel and Palestine, that includes Gaza. Uh, no one following this particular story here, which I know is of interest to, uh, to um, our viewers on I-24, is confused about Hamas firing rockets at Israel. A few people have any illusion about Hamas being nice people. The story gets out. Um, and, and, and the journalists, at the end of the day, are people, and we have to account for that. We live in an imperfect and messy world, and I think to try to impose some kind of uh, mythical notion of absolute objectivity and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, and neutrality is a little bit of a fool's errand. Um, Tom, I have a hunch you're going to want to react to what Dan had to say there, who feels that maybe some of the, uh, the much of the criticism against journalism is uh, unfair and exaggerated, if I'm, if I'm paraphrasing you uh, correctly. I think you paraphrased correctly, yes. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course, some of it is unfair and exaggerated. But when one, st and of course, Dan is right, journalists are human beings, we're all imperfect. Uh, being entirely objective or balanced is incredibly difficult for anybody. Nevertheless, there are journalists at work who are pretty balanced. In general, though, the media is not. It's not in two ways. First of all, it covers this conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, much too much, in my view. It should be covered, but it's obsessive 
heavily covered. So the average person in the West thinks it's the most deadly, vicious, nasty conflict on the planet, when clearly it isn't. And then we have huge heated demonstrations and rallies of the kind that brought central London to a standstill yesterday again. We have vicious attacks on Jews in cities like Los Angeles and New York and London. Now, of course, it's not the media's direct fault, but this media obsession with Israel, it's not just a little bit more. They put some media organizations have put more reporters on the Israeli-Palestinian issue than the entire rest of the world outside the United States. It cannot be, even if we take Hamas's figures at face value of the number of civilian dead, and there are questions about that, but even if we take their figures at face value, it cannot justify the pure amount of words that, say, the New York Times has devoted in the last week. Tens of thousands of words, round-the-clock coverage on the BBC and, and uh, you know, uh, France 24 and CNN and so on. And this creates a very heated atmosphere. And then secondly, inside that coverage, I would strongly argue there's a severe imbalance um, because most uh, journalists veer left. They want to support the, the party they perceive as the underdog, which would be the Palestinians. So they, they, they seem to be wanting to be a corrective against Israel, but they often overdo it and they end up, in my view, demonizing Israel. And then we have physical assaults on Jews in London and Paris right. and New York. And I, well, I, 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 want, I want Dan to be able to respond but I, and I'm going to add that some of the criticism Tom has, has made uh, uh, in some way mirrors some of the criticism that, that was directly leveled against uh, AP's work in Israel by one of AP's former staffers here, Matthew Friedman. So, uh, Dan, your response. Look, I would agree that, um, that a lot of people in the world would think that Israel's problems and Israel's actions are more unique than is the case. And they may not know that there are much bigger cases of injustice, uh, destruction and death uh, happening in other conflicts. So, so that much is true. But I think it is false to uh, suggest that this is happening uh, because of some media conspiracy to put too much attention on Israel. The BBC um, is is a fairly rare instance of, 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 of a very major and important uh, news platform that is not really a business. But what they do, at the end of the day, in terms of what you would view as the excess attention to Israel, does mirror that uh, which is done by businesses. And that confronts us all with the question of what is news. The fact that we're talking here on I-24, is that news? Is that going to be a story uh, you know, on the front page of the New York Times? It will not. Why? doesn't interest enough people. That's a fact. The reason why people pay attention, why the news media that is currently showing declining margins in its business side is paying so much attention to Israel is because the audience, the audience finds it interesting. It is absolutely a reaction to the market. Uh, the other, the, the the other matter that uh, that you alluded to is you know is, is is the coverage unfair? Look, all democratic countries suffer from what could be viewed as a, as a double standard, uh, and that includes Israel because things are expected of them that are not expected. Let us say of Syria or even of China or even of Russia. <laughs> to, to, to uh, reference the country in the news today for questionable actions, Belarus. It just isn't as shocking. And one of the definitions of news is that which is surprising. And so it is surprising when a democratic country gets itself into all kinds of messy business. Um, yeah. There's also, it's not a perfect system. There are expectations there are based on power politics. That's why maybe China gets a bit of a break, but that's more or less a story. But, well, look. If, if, I, I, I want to, Tom. I, I think Tom is dying to get in there, so I'm going to. Uh... I just want to say that I only would partially agree with you. Look, um, Israel is held to a treble standard, not a double standard. For example, Britain, the country of my upbringing and, uh, and birth, uh, admitted last week that a few days earlier they bombed uh, ISIS targets in Iraq and killed a lot of people. It had almost no coverage, zero, in the British media. It, France is involved in lots of conflicts in Africa. I can name lots of other mm -hmm. democracies. Turkey is supposedly a democracy that kills people all the time time in Kurdistan and elsewhere. So it's not enough to say Israel is subjected to different standards because it's a democracy. If Israel was subjected to the same standards coverage of the United States, Britain and France, maybe so, but it's not. It's held to a unique standard that no other country on earth is held to. And I might point out that Iraq wasn't firing thousands of rockets at British cities. So there's no context to Britain bombing Iraq a few days ago. You probably haven't heard about it because it was barely covered anywhere 
but it, it won't. Can I, can I just jump in, Tom? Because I'm going to relate to that. I would that. like to interject if I may. Uh, I, I, okay. But I just want to add that we're having this discussion because of uh, personal social media posts that so that some of the journalists covering this conflict, Dan, have intensely uh, 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 partisan feelings about it. And maybe that's a pro that is a problem. I don't know that you can just write it down to business sense. We're seeing, obviously, people who are involved covering this conflict. Uh, obviously having super intense feelings. I'm not so sure that we're, we're going to see that for people who necessarily are covering the Afghanistan conflicts, for example. I don't think the vast majority of journalists covering Israel, um, local or foreign, um, you know, uh, tweeted in that manner, called anyone a Nazi. I think that is uh, an exception that gets inflated by activists who make too much of this issue. It's an interesting issue. Um, there's a lot to be said. You're right about Iraq, and that came up in another uh, I-24 I panel that I was on, and I brought it up myself. There are situations when, when democratic countries do get away with, uh, you know, creating a tremendous amount of what they call collateral damage, more so than Israel ever did in Gaza. I think the United so States killed 10 Emily Wilder. Iraq. Sorry, yeah, sorry. Yes, with Emily Wilder. No, so my point, though, was... Uh, you, know, I, I, you know, gentlemen, I'd rather this not be a discussion about Israel. I really, I really would rather it be a discussion about journalism. Emily Wilder, in one of her posts, uh, called into question the notion of objectivity in covering an issue such as the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And I just wonder briefly how you both feel about that. Can, can I, I just say can always be called into question? Object um, I'm sorry. Objectivity. She called I think it the notion can always be called into question, and all journalists, at the end of the day, develop, you know, opinions about the things they're covering. And if they do their, jo their job well, then they keep their opinions um, out of their coverage, except as regards the opinion side. Okay, Tom, think, twenty seconds to respond. I don't, yeah, I don't think the problem. Of course, what Emily Wilder said doesn't compare to the BBC and CNN people who use, praised Hitler. Nevertheless, it wasn't criticisms of Israel. She used very offensive language. She called Sheldon Adelson, I think, a mole rat. She called Ben Shapiro a turd. This is, you know, she chanted the birth right, birth wrong. The land was stolen all along. Israel is an apartheid state. This is not like saying, I have an opinion, I think the Palestinians should have a state. I right. think we're going to have to leave it. Blockade. Sorry, we... I think it's stronger than that, what she's done. Right. Well, we'll have to leave it at that. But uh, Dan, Tom Gross, Dan Perry, thank you for joining us on I-24 News.